All right, hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys did great in your fantasy playoffs and were able to bring home a championship. Now that fantasy season's over, obviously going to be shifting to different content. Today I wanted to go over my playoff power rankings. I just kind of want to discuss each team where I feel they are at, how far I think they might be able to go and what the outlook is on the game for them this weekend. We are going to start at 14 and work our way to my number one team. But before we get into that, smash the like button for me if you enjoy the content today and please consider subscribing to the channel. That would be oh so helpful. If you haven't clicked the button, you can join us in the journey and we would love to have you. Let's start with team number 14 and that is the Pittsburgh Steelers for me. I didn't think they should have gotten into the playoffs to begin with when they had that really good record, something like 10 and three, nine and three, and they were dominating. We knew that this team had a lot of warts and I think that is obviously still the case. Now we look what they do well. Offensively, they can run the football. Offensive line has been okay, but not great. They have awesome receivers. George Pickens has exploded, especially in the second half of the season. And Deontay Johnson, since he's been healthy, has been very good as well. The problem though, like I said, is the quarterback, Mason Rudolph, he may be 3-0, but he is far from perfect, and he has played, I would say, average football at best for this team thus far. The defense has been great, especially forcing turnovers, but the biggest issue is they're going to be without TJ Watt. Now, with him, I didn't like their chances. Without him, I really don't see a path to victory for Pittsburgh. It's a great story, them being able to make the playoffs and once again have a record over 500, 17 straight years for Mike Tomlin doing that, which is impressive. However, it is going to be, I believe, a very short trip to the playoffs for the Steelers. At 13, I have Philadelphia. Now, they started out looking like they were going to run it back and be extremely successful doing it. They were dominating this year, 10 and one, 11 and one maybe, before they lost five out of their last six games. And it hasn't just been the losses that have been bad for the Eagles. It's been how they have lost these games and really the players they've lost along the process lately. Philadelphia just does not look like the same team dominating the trenches as they had for the beginning of the season. That back end has been horrible all year, but the secondary is somehow seemingly getting worse as the weeks go on. They gave 35 points to the Arizona Cardinals and were down 24 to nothing to the Giants before pulling their starters. So the Eagles, it was a great run early. They have completely fallen apart at the seams. They can still tush push better than anyone in the league, but they cannot stop anybody. The offense is good, but it has struggled. And I think a lot of that has to do with injuries, specifically to Jalen Hurts. The running back room has been good, just inconsistent as far as efficiency is concerned. We know they have awesome receivers, but it doesn't matter how many points this team can score when they're going to give up 30 plus in every single contest. So the Eagles, as much as I liked them early on to start the year, and as much as I thought that they could maybe run it back and get back to a Super Bowl, that is clearly not the case. Philly has fallen off, and I do not think that there is any way, even if they can squeak past Tampa, which seems questionable at best, that they are going to make a deep run this season. Next in my list, at 12, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They play Philly, so there is a good shot that this game goes down to the wire. It's pretty simple. Somebody had to win the NFC South, and I guess Tampa Bay decided to be the team to do it. Big win at the end of the year against Carolina, but that does not inspire much confidence when your final game to cement your playoff spot is a 9-0 victory over the worst team in football. The Bucs have looked great in spurts, but they have not been able to consistently put it together clearly with that one game over 500 record, and they haven't really beaten up or looked impressive against any good teams this season. 
They have a good shot against Philly because they're at home, and I think that helps them with that good weather because Baker Mayfield has been lighting it up all season long. If the Bucs get that passing game going early, which I don't know why they wouldn't be able to against a team like Philly who can't stop the pass, I think Tampa has a great opportunity to get at least one win. However, the question is going to be Baker's health. He looked iffy at best last week against Carolina, was clearly bothered, and we do not know how much percentage he is coming in to this game with Philadelphia. But if Baker is 85% plus in this one, I think the Bucs can win it. My 11th ranked team in the 2023 playoffs are the Green Bay Packers. We're going to start with this because I have to get it out of the way. As much as it pains me to admit it, Jordan Love has looked really good, especially over the last two months or so. He has been the only reason that Green Bay had an opportunity at sniffing the playoffs, let alone winning and getting in. Green Bay's defense is one of the worst in the NFL, and it really has been for most of the season. They've been trying to get their defensive coordinator, Barry, fired for, I would say, at least six weeks. They're probably going to hold on to him now that they're in the playoffs, but it is not a good look. And I do not expect Green Bay to be able to stop that incredible Cowboys offense. Now, Jordan Love has been good enough to put up some points. And I think Green Bay, if their defense can get a turnover or two, can stick around. However, there are just too many things going against this team for me to be a firm believer in them. Offensive line has been okay. The running game has basically been abysmal. A lot of that was Aaron Jones being banged up most of the year. That's why they drafted A.J. Dillon, and that guy disappeared for most of the season. His efficiency was horrible. His ability to catch the ball out of the backfield seemed to go backwards. So outside of a lot of young receivers for Green Bay, it's going to be Jordan Love doing it all, and I just do not like the Packers' chances on the road with that. All right, now to some teams with some maybe legit opportunities to make noise. We are into my top 10, and I start with the Miami Dolphins. I would have loved to have this team higher, but the long and short of it is this. The Dolphins are banged up very banged up to be sure and those injuries are going to take a toll on them in the postseason they already have as the season has winded down miami is going to live and die with their scoring and i think they might struggle to do that in one of the worst temperature and weather games that we have ever seen in wild card weekend when they go to kansas city now, they would have been a huge advantage had they been able to play at home in Miami. That is not the case after losing to the Bills. That's why I can't put the Dolphins any higher than this. That defense has been really good, especially that secondary since the return of Jalen Ramsey. I think the loss of Bradley Chubb cannot be overstated. So as good as that secondary has been, if they cannot get to the quarterback and put pressure on him, it is not going to matter. We know that Tyree Kill is one of the best in the game right now, and he completely changes what defenses have to do. They should also be getting Jalen Waddle back, and Raheem Mostert, who led the league in rushing touchdowns, is also set, at least looking like, to return. So these things are all going to help the Dolphins. However, the problem is not only the weather, but the style of offense that they run, and going into Kansas City with wins, potentially snow, and very frigid temperatures does not bode well. And I think that trying to stop Isaiah Pacheco in those conditions is going to be a nightmare. Number nine, I have the Houston Texans, probably the best, biggest, and most awesome surprise of the 2023 NFL season are the Houston Texans winning their division. Obviously, it took a complete and utter embarrassment of a collapse by the Jacksonville Jaguars to make it happen, but let's not discount what C.J. Stroud has done for this franchise. Along with D'Amico Ryans, they have transformed what this team can be, and they have an opportunity to start the playoffs with a win. It's going to be a really tough game against Cleveland, 
but Houston has shown that they can play with pretty much anybody, especially when CJ Stroud has been healthy. Missing a couple games, you thought Houston might not be able to make it. They found ways to win. I credit the coaching staff, and honestly, this team has come together. Their defense is going to be the biggest question. They cannot stop anybody through the air, but they have gotten better on the back end over the last couple games, and they can stop the run. Top five run-stopping defense in this league, and that is going to be huge in the playoffs. We know that matchup with Cleveland, they are going to have to stop the run and make the Browns beat them through the air. And that is something that Houston can do. The main reason, though, that I am a believer in Houston is C.J. Stroud. I've been on this guy since draft day. I had him as my number one quarterback prospect last year. Check out my draft video if you don't believe me. And he has been everything and then some for the Texans. He threw for over 4,000 yards, set countless rookie records that are not going to be broken anytime soon. He not only led the league in passing yards, but he also led it in touchdown to interception ratio. There's been three players ever that have done that. Two of them are Hall of Famers, and then CJ Stroud just did it as a rookie. So there really is no ceiling for this team, because we don't know what the ceiling is for C.J. Stroud. He's playing as one of the top five quarterbacks in the NFL right now, hands down, and he could carry this team a long way. We know they have Nico Collins out wide, his alpha who has been dominant, and especially with another week for him to get even healthier, he could pop up again this week. The backfield has turned a little bit. It is now Devin Singletary as the RB1, but he has looked awesome in spurts. He lacks consistency, I think, but that's okay when you got a quarterback who can throw for 350 plus and three tutties any single week. All I got to say about Houston is watch out. The Strouds are coming. My eighth ranked team are the Detroit Lions. And it was a painful way for them to enter the playoffs, losing Sam Laporta. This is going to be a big loss. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. As a Vikings fan, I wanted to see Detroit do well in the playoffs, move on, at least win one, hopefully a couple games. I just do not know if I believe it, losing that key piece. Yeah, he's a rookie and he's a tight end, but he's one of the best rookie tight ends to ever play. And he has been a monster part of what they do offensively, not just when he has the ball in his hands, but when he doesn't as well. But it is not all doom and gloom in Detroit losing Sam Laporta. That's because Jared Goff, the Goff father, has been here. He has done it before. He has been a Super Bowl starting quarterback. They have a great running game. The Lions can lean on this and take the pressure off of Goff as well. And I do not think that we can overstate how important that will be. It's even more important because this offensive line is one of the best in the NFL. And if Detroit can just hand it off 10, 15 times in the first half and be able to get a rhythm, put points on the board and put pressure on the defense, then Detroit can beat anybody, yes, any team. If they establish the run and set up the play action, and you have a Mon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, who has come on as of late, Chris Reynolds, there are a lot of weapons in Detroit still healthy that can do damage. Jameer Gibbs is a capable pass catching back as well, one of the best in the league in space. So it is going to be up to the Los Angeles Rams to shut down the running game, which they've done very well most of the season, and make Jared Goff beat them. That is the path to success to beat the Lions. Defensively, Detroit has been a dumpster fire on the back end. They're going to give up over 300 yards passing. It is just the way it is, but they can stop the run much like Houston. Detroit is one of the best run-stopping teams in the entire NFL. They are probably going to have to beat you in a shootout, just like Houston. A lot of similarities between those two teams, but I like their chances just as good because of that running game. My seventh ranked team are the Buffalo Bills. Now, some people have them in the top five right now, and I just do not see it. Yeah, they are on a heater. They've won five straight games. But for being honest, a couple of the teams that they have beaten have been very bad. Hello, the Jets. 
Patriots, etc. But not only that, they just haven't looked that impressive doing it more often than not. Now, a win is a win, and I completely agree that that is the most important thing. But it's been a lot of James Cook. It hasn't been Josh Allen, I would say, carrying this team, which isn't a bad thing. But it also has shown that Buffalo has not been that dominant force going into the playoffs and building momentum that they maybe have been in years past. It's an absolutely incredible story. Buffalo being basically out of the playoffs and now all of a sudden they are a number two seed. But they have had injuries as well. They're started early in the year, so maybe they've had more time to adapt, and that is great, but they are still missing key pieces. The Bills have shown that they can be a top offensive team and a top defensive team. The issue, and really the only one for Buffalo, is which Josh Allen is going to show up. If you get the Superman Josh Allen that actually succeeds in what he is trying to do, then you will have a legit chance at winning the Super Bowl. But if you get the Josh Allen that is trying to throw into double coverage, forcing balls, and maybe trying to do it too much with his legs, even though he is an absolute terror to bring down an open space, if those turnovers start coming for the Bills, that is flat out how you beat this team. So Buffalo could be number one on this list next week if they go in and dominate. They could also be the worst team left with a win because they can win ugly, they can lose ugly for sure. And we just do not know which Buffalo team we are going to get. My sixth ranked team is the Kansas City Chiefs. And I can understand if you want this team in the top three because of what they've done in the past. I can also understand how you would have this team outside of the top 10. Because let's be fair about this. This is the worst Chiefs team that we have seen with Patrick Mahomes on, at the helm. I understand the defense is great, but the offense is beyond abysmal. And Patrick Mahomes, I would say, is not even really playing like a top 10 quarterback in the NFL right now. Those are just the facts. He has turned the ball over, he's made shoddy decisions, and he hasn't gotten any help from his pass catchers. I will give you that. Now, what keeps Kansas City a top six team for me is of course Patrick Mahomes, who can win it at any given moment, in any given play, in any given situation. But that alone is not enough. It is the defense that is going to carry this Chiefs team should they make a run. Now, they have struggled stopping the run over the last month or so, and they need to figure out a way to make that stop because if they can't stop the run, Kansas City is basically screwed. But should they be able to get back to where they were, closer to a top 10 run stopping team earlier on in the year, and then they continue to be awesome on the back end, as they have been, then Kansas City can go really far. They only need a couple big plays from Mahomes, lean on Isaiah Pacheco, and win a game something like 20 to 17. The Chiefs are not going to win any shootouts, but they shouldn't need to with how good this defense has been. We also know that the narrative around this team is only going to help them in critical moments when it matters most. Speaking of narratives, hello number five, the Dallas Cowboys. Really, this team should be further down because they did not beat Detroit. But fair is fair, they're the number two seed now. And all that matters is that the Cowboys are going to be playing at home until the NFC Championship game if San Francisco can take care of their business. And what that means is the Cowboys are likely going to get there. This team has been absolutely dominant offensively at home, averaging nearly 40 points per game. CD and Dak look like the best quarterback wide receiver combo in the NFL right now. And Tony Pollard has actually finally turned it around a little bit on the ground, looking a little more dangerous as of late. This offense can put up points with anybody. They scored the most points in the league this year. And Dallas's defense is not too shabby either. Playmakers at every key position, they have been dominant, especially against lower competition. Now, I know they're not going to see that quote-unquote lower competition in the playoffs, but I would argue that Green Bay qualifies, and this first round for them should be a cakewalk. Really, the only concerns that I have for Dallas 
are stopping the run. They've given up over 200 yards four plus times this season. I think 266 against the Cardinals on the ground. So if Dallas gets into a position where they're either playing catch up or they are just unable to shut down the opponent's run game, then their offense isn't going to be on the field much. And that is a scenario where they can lose a football game. Now, if that is not the case, there's really no stopping this Cowboys team. If they get ahead, they are going to get after the quarterback. They're going to create chaos in the backfield, most likely get a turnover or two, and they are going to make you look silly. So Dallas, easily a top five team, and surprising to some that I have them at five. At four, right in front of them, I have the Los Angeles Rams. Now let me make my case here because the Rams are one of the hottest teams in the NFL right now. They continue to find ways to win. The Rams have a quarterback coach combination that has been here and done the thing before just a couple of years ago. They also have probably a top five all time defender in Aaron Donald. He is still crushing offensive lines, and he will be there in the playoffs to do it one more time for LA here. This back end has been better than advertised. The Rams overall have given up 23 or more points as a defense two times all season long. So if they can do it on the defensive end, we know this team can do it offensively. Sean McVay, a certified offensive genius, and now he's got not only Cooper Cup, but Puka Nakua, who just went for almost 1,500 yards and 100 plus catches as a rookie. This offense has been firing on all cylinders, especially since Kyron Williams got back. That guy's averaging almost 150 total yards per game. So when we think about all the pieces that Los Angeles has, it's really more of a question of why are other people not seeing them as the legit terrifying threat that they are. All right, now we are getting to the meat of it. My top three teams. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let's hop to it at three. I have the Cleveland Browns. I absolutely love this team, and it starts with the defense. Cleveland has an all-world defensive end, Miles Garrett. He is going to wreak havoc. They also have an excellent back end, the number one passing defense in the NFL, and they were also number 10 against the run. Cleveland gets to the quarterback, they don't let you run it on them, and they turn the ball over as well. There are really no weaknesses on the defensive end of the football for Cleveland. Now, if that was all that we had in Cleveland, I would definitely not have them in my top three, but Joe Cool is there as well. Flacco has been dominant since taking over as the starting quarterback for Cleveland. He's thrown 11 touchdowns in five games, and of course he missed last week as they rested their starters. This offense has been built around the run, and although they lost Nick Chubb, Jerome Ford has been good this year in relief, and they brought back Kareem Hunt as well. He has been an awesome change of pace back. He is still dangerous in space and gives you that compliment as a pass catcher. Out wide, they have Amari Cooper. Now, they do not have the depth at some of these other teams, but they don't need it because of that excellent defense. And Amari Cooper just went for over 250 yards. So if he is all they got, they could certainly be doing worse. The Browns can put up points in a hurry. They have shown an ability to be explosive with Joe Flacco back there. Now the biggest concern that I have for Cleveland is the turnovers. And in the playoffs, there is probably nothing more important or crucial than winning the turnover battle. So that is something that could definitely undo Cleveland in the playoffs. But outside of that, Cleveland is one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Before sitting starters last week, they had won seven out of their last nine games. This team continues to find ways to get it done. I am also a believer in Kevin Stefanski. How couldn't you be after the quarterback situation that this team had to go through? They started with the 
Deshaun Watson. They went to DTR. Jeff Driscoll started last week for this team. And yet, here are the Cleveland Browns looking like one of the most dangerous teams in the NFL. The turnovers will be their undoing if anything is, but if Joe Flacco, who's been here before, who has won a Super Bowl with a defense just like this, albeit obviously better, you would have to think that because of that experience, once the playoffs start, Flacco knows when to take risks, when to hold on to the ball and avoid turning it over. And if he does that, Cleveland is going to be a very hard out. That defense is not only elite at every level, we know it travels and they want to be in the cold. They want to be able to smack you in the face and make you feel it. And that is a team that I do not want to face in the playoffs. Now to my top two, and it's pretty clear cut, but we're gonna go over it anyway. San Francisco from the NFC, the most dominant team there, clear as day. It is very simple. If the 49ers are healthy, there is nobody in the NFC that is going to beat them. I think their biggest threat are the Los Angeles Rams because they are in the same division and they've seen it and been able to play against it multiple times this season already. We know that the Rams played them close both games as well. But San Francisco, what did they do poorly? The only question mark here is the quarterback and that might be mitigated because their offense and their defense is just that good. Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. They have the best football in the last decade plus as well. And Kyle Juszczyk. There are so many options for Purdy to dump it off to that he does not have to be good. Now, thank God that this MVP nonsense is gone because Purdy never was that and I don't think ever will be. But he is plenty good enough to distribute to these elite playmakers. And that is good enough for the 49ers to win a lot of games because they also bring to the table one of the best defenses in the last couple of seasons. This 49er defense is ferocious. They get after the quarterback. They turn you over. And they don't really give up chunk plays. Really, the only way I see this team going down before the Super Bowl is if they maybe turn the ball over or just get behind early there's a little bit more pressure and Brock Purdy has shown in those circumstances he has not been able to rise to the occasion at least yet which brings me to my number one team the Baltimore Ravens they have to be everyone's number one team right there's nothing this team hasn't done they continue to dominate against great competition smack these Niners in the face just a couple of weeks ago and look to be an unstoppable force the Ravens are excellent on defense they can do anything they want on offense to you once they get rolling and Lamar Jackson has now elevated his game where he is a major threat throwing the football as well as running it. There's not a whole lot that you can do as a defense when he is at his best. And we saw that when the Niners played the Ravens. They looked like a complete other team. They were not able to be aggressive because of Lamar's speed. They weren't able to sit back either because then Lamar just took off and chewed up yardage on the ground. So that capability from Jackson is why he's gonna win his second MVP and why the Ravens are the most dangerous team left in these playoffs. I would say the concerns that you have as a Ravens fan and the things that will keep this team from winning a Super Bowl, twofold. First, it's going to be Lamar Jackson because I just talked about how amazing he is, but he hasn't been that in the playoffs. A one in three record and he has really played bad football almost the majority of each of those games i'm not sure he has even in his one win a quote unquote good game in the playoffs so he has to get that monkey off of his back first and foremost but i think that he is going to be able to do that now the other thing that is going to get this team in trouble is for whatever reason baltimore at times has let lesser competition stick around and has almost tried to throw games, if you will, at certain points as well. 
So if Baltimore doesn't get bored of being awesome and crushing teams, they should be just fine until they get to a rematch with what I believe is going to be a Super Bowl between the 49ers and the Ravens. A lot of things can happen, of course, before we get there, but Baltimore, as long as they decide to take care of business and Lamar can get the monkey of the playoff wins off of his back, this Ravens team is destined to have a shot at winning it all. They've lost a ton of backs and they still find ways to move it on the ground. And even though their receiving core is not great, Lamar has been able to distribute it effectively, and he has been able to elevate the game of Zay Flowers, who has stepped up in the absence of Mark Andrews. Odell Beckham, he's been hit or miss, but he has had some games and flash, and I think he can give you enough in the passing game as a compliment to Flowers where this team will be fine. The biggest emergence in the passing game has been Isaiah Likely. That loss of Mark Andrews could have really hurt this team, but Likely has stepped up. He has not been a one-for-one -one swap. There really isn't one for Mark Andrews. However, he has done an admirable job giving the Baltimore Ravens what they need as a tight end option, a safety valve to Lamar underneath. Likely has also played with a Lamar enough at this point that he understands when he breaks contain, how to flash and get open for him to convert key third downs, continually move the sticks, that's what this offense needs to do to be successful. It's not a very big play offense, and that is fine. Once in a while, Zay Flowers has given them a little bit something, but with Keaton Mitchell out in the backfield, I don't expect a ton of explosive plays. But Baltimore can wear you down better than anyone in the NFL. And if they get in that mode and Lamar Jackson is rolling, there is no team that can slow down the Ravens. And with that, I will bid you all farewell. Please consider liking the video if you enjoyed today's content. And subscribing to Relentless Press means a lot as well. We are oh so close to getting to a thousand subscribers. Click the subscribe button and you can join us along in the journey. Drop any questions or comments that you have down below. I love the engagement. Who are your top five teams and why? Who do you think could make a run this postseason? This is Relentless Press. I am your host, Abraham Opatz, and I will see you next time.